Welcome, music enthusiasts. Get ready for a deep dive into the story of Mariska Veras, Shocking Blue, and their the biggest hit, Venus. Mariska Veras was born in 1947 in The Hague, the Netherlands. Music was in Mariska's blood. Her father, Lajos Veras, was a Romani violinist, and she immersed herself in music by playing piano alongside him. As she grew up, Mariska extended her musical talents, singing with local bands in The Hague, including the Bumble Bees. She also recorded several solo singles. Shocking Blue, an established band in the Netherlands, took a new direction when Mariska joined after the departure of original frontman Fred de Wilde, who left to join the army. Her distinctive talent caught the attention of Shocking Blue's songwriter and guitarist, Robbie Van Leeuwen, when he spotted her singing at a Bumblebee's party. Instantly impressed, he decided she was a perfect fit for the band. She had a very impressive voice, quite different from all the other girl singers, he later said. She was rather like Grace Slick from Jefferson Airplane. Upon Mariska Veras joining Shocking Blue as their first female member, the band's entire dynamic shifted. Mariska has sang in a way that no man could, inevitably becoming the group's central figure. Mariska's distinct appearance featured long, dark hair with bangs framing her alluring, coal-rimmed eyes, complemented by wild print blouses, short skirts, and high boots. Following the change in the lead singer, extensive comparisons between Shocking Blue and Jefferson Airplane surfaced. However, the likenesses between Mariska and Grace Slick were primarily superficial. Mariska Veras, for starters, demonstrated a more versatile vocal prowess. Years later, Mariska told the Belgian magazine Flair, I was just a painted doll. Nobody could ever reach me. Nowadays, I am more open to people. In another interview, she was recalling, I was a silly cow. All I drank was tea and orange juice. I didn't touch drugs either. I didn't waste all my money, didn't go to bars, didn't have hundreds of friends. No, felt no need at all. I was just fine staying at home. Captured on a two-track machine, Venus debuted in the Netherlands in July 1969, swiftly claiming the top spot on charts in countries like Australia, Canada, and the United States. This success significantly contributed to Shocking Blue's rise to international acclaim. Regarded as one of the most beloved songs of the late 1960s and early 1970s, Venus solidified the band's impact on the music scene. Mariska later told in an interview, I remember well when we heard we were at Wonder One. We were rehearsing, but we didn't have any time to celebrate. Just record a song, the next day traveling again. That was all. For some, the song may have sounded strangely familiar. This is because it borrowed its irresistible melody from an early 1960s rendition of the folk tune, The Banjo Song recorded by Mama Cass's initial band, The Big Three. However, the majority remained unaware of its origins, and the colossal tune proceeded to sell seven million copies worldwide. The song's introduction reveals clear influences, commencing with resonant suspended guitar chords reminiscent of Pete Townshend's Pinball Wizard from The Who's Tommy, released just a few months before Venus in March 1969. What's the meaning behind Shocking Blue's Venus? In Roman mythology, Venus is the goddess of love, beauty, and fertility. It serves as an ode to the captivating allure of women, narrating the tale of an irresistible, beautiful, and mysterious woman who enchants those around her. The lyrics suggest that the woman is enigmatic and that no one could escape her charms. Venus was written by Robbie Van Leeuwen, the guitarist of Shocking Blue, Van Leeuwen was inspired by two classic songs, Taurus by Spirit and Fire by Jimi Hendrix. The song contains a catchy guitar riff and a simple but effective chorus. In 1988, Mariska told in an interview about thundering fame that fell on her and bandmates' heads. While there were gigs where things went out of control, 
where they demolishes things in halls with open-air concerts. In Japan and in Israel, I remember well, had my own bodyguard. We were transported in an ambulance. We couldn't walk on the streets. It was really scary. When walked next to each other and people all around us tried to grab us. So what I did, I started to pinch them back. Everybody wanted to touch me, but it was scary. So what I did to keep them away is to twist their skin. In Japan, they tried cut my hair. And the funny thing is, they were wigs. I don't have straight hair. I always wanted to have straight hair. In the past, I ironed it on an ironing board. In those days, I wanted straight hair, so what's better than a wig? But nobody ever knew. Venus stands out as a classic track on Shocking Blues at Home LP. Equally catchy and memorable are California Here I Come and Long and Lonesome Road, along with the captivating Love Buzz. The album features a diverse range, including a reggae rock instrumental, upbeat tunes that closely rival Venus, and the R&B-fueled opener, Ball Weevil. Although not as robust or consistent as At Home, the subsequent Shocking Blue albums, Scorpio's Dance and Third Album, remained on par with the quality of music released in the early 1970s, featuring notable standout tracks. During these years, while relentlessly touring across vast distances, the band managed to squeeze in the recording of a few non-album singles. Among these, Never Marry a Railroad Man stands out as possibly their best song, Despite achieving number one status in the Netherlands and earning gold records in Germany and Japan, this mid-tempo track, with its memorable staccato guitar riff and lingering vocal melody, curiously failed to make an impact in America. In the USA, shocking blues success since Venus had been limited to the lower reaches of the top 100, and surprisingly, they were never widely popular in England. In 1973, the downward spiral began. The band experienced their initial setback with the flop single, Let Me Carry Your Bag, which failed to make an impact domestically or internationally. Robbie Van Leeuwen, the band's creator and sole songwriter until then, showed signs of exhaustion after five years of relentless touring, continuous recording, and the burden of songwriting responsibilities reflected in the lackluster quality of this record. Tensions escalated with their label, Pink Elephant, and before long, they faced the departure of original bassist Klausje van der Waal. After the breakup of Shocking Blue on June 1, 1974, Mariska Vares ventured into a solo career. Perhaps unsettled by the sex symbol label, she adopted a different image in the late 70s, opting for short hair and long dresses on stage. Despite releasing multiple singles from the mid-70s onward, Celes were modeste, eventually leading her to collaborate with jazz bands in the Netherlands during the 1980s. Shocking Blue regrouped with its classic lineup in 1979, recording Louise as their first single since the 1974 breakup. Unfortunately, the song was never released. Nevertheless, they performed live in 1980, treating the audience to earlier songs like Venus and Never Marry a Railroad Man. The band made another brief comeback in 1984, participating in a one-night-only event at a Back to the 60s festival in Den Bosch, alongside surviving members of Q65, the Shoes, and other Hague groups. The night left a lasting impression, showcasing Van Leeuwen's enduring style and Veers's remarkable rock voice. Their renditions of Jefferson Airplane's Somebody to Love and White Rabbit rivaled their own hits. In 1986, the band released a new single, The Jury and the Judge, with I Am Hanging On to Love as the B-side. Shocking Blue continued to stay active, releasing singles like Venus 90 and Body and Soul in 1990 and 1994, respectively. Mariska continued a solo journey, exploring diverse genres dear to her, founding the shocking jazz quintet in the 1990s. A decade later, she released the Romany jazz album Gypsy Heart. In 2006, Mariska Vares passed away at the age of 59. Shocking Blues drummer Cor van der Beek left us in 1998 at the age of 49. The band's bassist, 
Klaus van der Waal, departed in 2018 at the age of 69. Shocking Blue's legacy is etched into the annals of music history. Beyond their chart-topping success, Shocking Blue's ability to transcend time, captivating audiences with a unique sonic signature, ensures their enduring impact on the global music scene.